And the big story tonight at 5, we're following breaking news on Capitol Hill. Pro-Palestinian protesters making their way inside of the Cannon House office building. And let's take you there live right now as the demonstrations continue. And you can see the crowd there has certainly thinned out. And that's because Capitol Police have been making arrests for the past few hours inside that congressional office building. Fox 5's Tom Fitzgerald has been live outside as the protests gathered earlier this afternoon. Fitz, how's it looking now? Well, good evening. This started about noon today down on the National Mall. This group calling itself the Jewish Voice for Peace was out here today calling on Israel to enter a ceasefire after it's been defending itself following the Hamas attacks of a week and a half ago. But this protest began to leave the National Mall and made its way up here to Capitol Hill. And that is when things got out of control. Let me show you the scene right now. This is Independence Avenue and South Capitol Street. U.S. Capitol Police are out here in force. Now, the protesters themselves said they had about 400 of their members that were able to actually enter the Cannon House office building today, and arrests are underway right now. We are told by the U.S. Capitol Police that they said that they had warned the protesters to stop demonstrating when they did not stop. We began arresting them, unquote. The Capitol Police also say that the arrests in Cannon are in conjunction with rolling street closures. So you ought to be aware of that as well. Now, joining us live tonight is uh, one of the representatives of this organization, uh, Marka Bird. Uh, Marka, we spoke to you earlier down on the National Mall. Why are you out here today, and why did you think entering the Cannon House office building, disrupting the operations today, was a wise choice today? We're a group of Jewish Americans who have come here to call for an immediate ceasefire and an end to the genocide in Gaza. And that is in Congress's hands. They have the ability to do this. So we are here to have our voices heard by Congress to make sure everybody knows that the most important thing is a ceasefire. You say you're a peaceful organization. We have reports from the U.S. Capitol Police that officers were assaulted today. How does that line up with a peaceful organization? The group in there was, was a peaceful protest. It was led by rabbis. They were singing. They were sitting on the floor. They were holding up signs. They were saying prayers together for the lives that were lost. So that was what was the plan, and that's what was happening in there today. How did you get into the building? Uh, citizens of the country and folks who are in the area are um, able to enter the building, go through security, and people went through security safely and um, were able to there to come together to sing their songs led by um, American rabbis here in this country. We know there was an earlier protest at the White House this week. There's one here today on Capitol Hill. Can we expect more of these? Until the ceasefire happens, Jewish Americans are not going to stop calling for peace in Gaza for an end to a genocide. So you can expect to hear our voices loudly until we get that ceasefire, until Gazans can sleep safely in their beds. All right. We appreciate your viewpoint on this. Thanks for talking to us. Uh, we should tell you there is another view on this. Ron Halber, who is the executive director of the Jewish uh, Community Relations Council of Greater Washington, uh, tells Fox 5 tonight that in his view, this group is a minority in his view and represents a very small left-wing faction in their view. Now, about 10 minutes ago, the protesters announced that they were actually ending of this demonstration. The music stopped, and you can see right now U.S. Capitol Police officers on bikes are slowly rolling through the area, telling the protesters to vacate the area. Some of them have moved down South Capitol Street. Uh, this has dispersed, even though Independence Avenue does remain closed. You can guarantee there are going to be more questions in the coming days about how this was able to escalate the way it did and how these protesters were able to get into a U.S. Capitol office building. We're live up here on the Hill. We'll send it back into you. And President Biden's on his way back from Israel after pledging full U.S. support in the war with Hamas. He met with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu in his war cabinet. The president also siding with Israel on the rocket strike on a hospital in Gaza that killed hundreds. That strike sparked protests across the region. The White House citing intelligence showing it was fired by Islamic Jihad, not by Israel. And based on what I've seen, it appears as though it was done by the other team, not, not you. But there's a lot of people out there not sure. 
The president also promising $100 million in aid for Palestinian civilians. He also worked out an agreement with Israel to get aid to civilians through the Gaza-Egypt border. It's not clear, though, when that would start.